Good morning, boys and girls. What I'm going to try to do in this uh, brief uh, briefing session is to explain to you in incredibly, hopefully clear detail, how you and your home PC using an ordinary broadband connection can broadcast lectures to the entire world like I have been doing for a whole year. So we're titling this, Turn Your Home Computer Into an International Classroom. Now you can look at my ugly picture. Here's how you do it. What you do is ask yourself the question, how can I lecture to anybody in the world? Everybody in the world. And that means, just like in a classroom, you're standing up, you're showing people PowerPoints, they are hearing your voice, you are hearing all of them, they can see everything on your screen, they can hear you just as well as they're sitting right next to you. And because I teach pathology, in addition, what I do is show them my microscope uh, individually, one-on-one, -on -one, like they're in my office sitting down with me. The only two things that you need to do this is hardware and software. Any computer that has a broadband internet connection is your hardware. Your software has to be two things, and they're both free. One of them is Skype. You probably have it already. And if you don't know what Skype is, you probably will be lost the rest of this lecture. Another one is a conferencing program called Dim Dim. It's not really a program because you don't have to download anything. You just go to www.dimdim.com and register free. That's all you have to do. So the whole thing costs nothing. And remember, you have to have a broadband internet connection, which means uh, DSL or cable. Uh, for some reason, we've had a lot of problems using Wi-Fi from uh, both the broadcaster or professor's point of view as well as the student's point of view as well. Well, uh, basically, if you remember a long time ago, way back when the uh, Internet was in the Stone Ages, they had these little ways for people to chat and text. And even before the Internet came around on the BBSs, you could chat with text. And then there uh, uh, evolved many generations of communication programs. Perhaps we could call them IM programs for instant messengers. I think I, the first one I remember was ICQ for I seek you, and then AOL came around to be sort of like the standard, Yahoo, Skype, Google, they're all into it. MIRC, which is an internet form of chat, and now all of the popular social networks like Facebook and MySpace and everything have methods for communication. In addition, the uh, have also been involvement from just chat, but also with broadband for voice, video, sharing screen, playing games, blah, 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 blah. Pretty much everything that you do uh, in terms of human interaction can be done with um, instant messaging uh, uh, routines. And if you look at the bottom of the screen here, practically all of these things that are now common in everyday life have uh, originated or been associated with these uh, instant messenger uh, chat routines. So, what is the net conference? Well, a net conference is where one computer uh, broadcasts and uh, other computers listen. Now, remember, the other computers do not have to be individual students. They could be a computer in a classroom full of students. So, rather than lecturing to one computer with one student, you could be lecturing to one computer with 500 students in the classroom. The uh, standard right now for net conferencing, even though everybody has gotten into the business like Microsoft, the standard is a, a program or an entity, a website called WebEx. And it seems to have the lion's share of the net conferencing market. It's not free. And um, there's a lot of WebEx clones and WebEx wannabes. But the one that we have most recently had the most success with is a free at least free up to 20 computers. 
a free program, a free website called Dim Dim. I suggest you go there right now, www.dimdim.com, and register and get yourself an official user ID and password. Okay, well, once you do that, it doesn't matter whether you have a PC or a Mac, but you do have to have a broadband internet connection. And that means either DSL or cable, and it has to be working pretty well. If you have the new super fast uh, broadband called Fios, that's great. If you're lucky enough to have a T1 or a T3 line, which most people don't, that would be sp uh, spectacular as well. But that's all you need in terms of hardware and internet availability. Now, in terms of software, once again, you need Skype. Skype, you can do free audio conferencing with up to 15 attendees. It works. As long as everybody has a broadband internet connection, and especially as long as everybody is not speaking at the same time. If you do not make your students mute their microphones when they are not speaking one at a time, the whole system will blow up and you'll think that my whole presentation is baloney and doesn't work. Dim Dim is also free and it's free up to 20 attendees and once again remember an attendee is a client's computer that client computer could be serving an entire auditorium as well as they have adequate audio-visual projection and uh, uh, audio as well. Now, what special settings do you need on Skype and Dim Dim? On Skype you need only one special setting other than the normal uh, defaults and on Dim Dim you need three. Okay, well on Skype you have to know how to make a group call. I can't give you the tutorial on that. If you don't know how to do it, if you're incapable of learning how, you will never fly with this technique, okay? The only thing you have to do special on Skype is you have to tell your students whenever they are not speaking, they have to mute their microphones. Otherwise, their background sounds will totally choke your bandwidth. Now, there's three things you have to do on Dim Dim. Once you are a registered member of Dim Dim and you go there and you go to your so-called preferences, you have to go to preferences, features, and then select audio visual none, audio microphone off, and auto hands free off. And the reason why you have to do these three things is because they are different from the default. And once you do them, you never have to do them again. Now, you then fire up your Dim Dim, you click off the option that says Share Computer Screen. That's the little orange bar, okay? And once you do that, it will give you the URL of your classroom. And once you have that URL, it will be basically HTTP colon forward slash forward slash my dot dim dim dot com forward slash and then your username will follow. That's the standard for right now. Okay, so if you're a professor, what do you have to do? Well, what you have to do is remember is you do not initiate the audio or the Skype. You have to wait to be called by one of your students who is handling the audio. We have delegated the student with the fastest internet service to be the person who hosts the group Skype audio conference and the professor is just one of those members. He has to wait to be called and he has to be an approved member or buddy of the person who is calling. Okay, well, once he's online, once he is on the Skype group, he then opens up his Dim Dim. He says host meeting. He already had the preferences set for none off and off. And then, once he uh, gets the URL of his location, he then pastes it into the Skype chat window. And then everybody just clicks on that link. And guess what? They are then all in his classroom. He could now share his screen with all these people. And we have found that this works with every browser except for Chrome. And 
In the case of myself, who teaches pathology, once I am sharing my screen, even if I am looking at microscopic slides with virtual microscopy in an offline viewer, such as the LivePix viewer to display FPX files, and by the way, both of those are free as well, um, you can then look at your microscope with all of your students like they're sitting on the other end of the microscope. Also, remember, there may be a few second delay, maybe two at most, from the time you flip a PowerPoint or go to a slide and the time somebody sees that slide as well. Now, what's the idiot card for students? Uh, just a few simple things. Same as the professor, they have to be an approved member of whoever is calling. And once again, I'll say it for the 10th time, you have to mute your mic. If you don't mute your mic, you will sabotage the entire session and you will then deserve to be murdered. Uh, and once again, once the professor uh, pastes in his URL into your area, you then click on that URL and then you sign in and you're in his classroom. Okay, we'll go into a little uh, rampage or a tirade here, a, a small rant. I don't think I have to go into this. It's so obvious. Teaching online is vastly superior to teaching in a walled classroom. Did you have a hard time understanding that? Let me say it again. Teaching online, even other than the convenience factors, is vastly superior from an audio-visual point of view to teaching in a stinking, enclosed, boxed, walled classroom. And why is that? Because the students can hear better, because the students can see better, the students can chat, they can bring in food, they can be naked if they want, they could be uh, Googling and wikiing all the time they want, they could be f breastfeeding their baby while they're taking your class as well. And furthermore, the whole entire class can be recorded, the session, with all the audio and all the video by just pressing one simple dim dim button. And if for some reason they want to go back to it or they missed it, you put the session online, bingo, they have it. And in my case in pathology, they can see pathology slides without eye strain, without worrying about the glass cracking. It's like they're on the other end of my microscope. And remember, what they're seeing on the monitor can be seen by multiple people in that room. So if they like the privilege of having their buddies in a room, they can have their buddies in the room and they're all watching the same computer. Remember, this is a zero overhead operation. There is no school walled box. I have a feeling that the overhead for universities, I always had the feeling that the school box makes more than the professors. Well, in this case, there is no school box, so they should be getting more money. Okay, what's the advantages of traditional courses? Walled boxes? None. Absolutely none. Unless you want to say the justification of exorbitant tuitions. Another thing I might say is a lot of the students say, well, Dr. Minersek, I like to be all in the same room with my friends and have that warm and toasty feeling. Kumbaya. I say, well, go to their house. Take off your clothes. Hold hands. You could have that same kumbaya feeling and still be in front of your computer with all of your friends. Uh, Last point is this. If the students are not participating by unmuting their mic and saying something every now and then, they might as well just be watching a movie. I can't think of any advantages right now to having good movies in lieu of real classrooms if the students do not want to participate very often they do. So let's just remember uh, the canned well-prepared movie is just as good as the real-time online session if the students don't speak. Thank you very much.